Hello, I'm Nicola Milne and I'm a primary care diabetes specialist nurse working in Manchester in the UK and I'm here to discuss how to manage the possible side effects um, in people with type 2 diabetes starting on GLP-1 receptor agonists. The most common side effects of the GLP-1 receptor agonists tend to be nausea, vomiting and diarrhoea. And this can be attributed to uh, one of their mode of actions, which is actually delayed gastric emptying. You can expect nausea in around one in four people newly starting on these medications and vomiting and diarrhoea in about one in ten. These symptoms are usually mild or moderate and in most people they subside after the first four to eight weeks of treatment. However, they are an important cause of people choosing to discontinue the GLP-1 receptor agonist therapy. So, in those that are unlucky enough to get side effects, what can be done to minimise these? So I think a really important aspect is to make sure that there's been a really thorough discussion and shared decision making around the choice of GLP-1 therapy between the healthcare professional and the person with diabetes. And this really does need to include the mode of action, the desired effects and the possible side effects of the medication. The person with diabetes then has an awareness of what to anticipate and therefore they're less startled by any side effects including some of the desired effects of having a reduced appetite and weight loss. So in my clinical experience I have come across a small minority of people who have discontinued the therapy because they or their family members were actually concerned about them having a reduced appetite and of having lost weight. So they hadn't understood that mode of action and the reasons for choosing the GLP-1 receptor agonist therapy. And this thorough discussion also serves to identify any contraindications to starting therapy, such as any severe gastrointestinal disease, pancreatitis, or any planned pregnancy. Appropriate dose titration, where applicable, is very important so that the person adjusts the medication strength in a timely manner. There are currently seven GLP-1 receptor agonists available in Europe and the USA. These are the weekly injections, dulaglutide and semaglutide, the daily injections, liraglutide and lixiexenatide, exenatide in its twice daily and extended release weekly forms, and more recently, the oral version of semaglutide, which is taken daily. All of these medications have different titration guidelines and dose escalation periods, so it's important to be familiar with these when using the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Monitoring by regular contact or giving the person a point of contact in case they develop side effects that are difficult to tolerate during initiation and dose escalation is really important. It's possible to pause the titration if necessary or even consider a temporary dose reduction if the person is struggling with side effects. It's valuable to keep reassuring that this can be expected in the initial weeks. If you're using liraglutide, the injection device does actually allow you for a slower escalation in doses uh, by using the clicks on the pen um, than is otherwise suggested by the manufacturer. And this could be an option in some cases, but I must really um, emphasise that this is only for people under the care of specialist teams, as this would effectively be an off-label approach to titration. If the person does report gastrointestinal symptoms when taking a GLP-1 receptor agonist, the first thing to do is to check for other potential causes such as gastrointestinal infection, generalised viral infection or any other new medications. And certainly I've had um, a couple of people that contacted me but actually the whole family were experiencing symptoms and it was due to um, a, a viral infections. Any severe um, acute abdominal pain, the GLP-1 receptor agonist should be stopped and the person should seek medical advice to exclude any possible pancreatitis. But if we have confirmed that the gastrointestinal symptoms are caused by the GLP-1 receptor agonist, it's important to reassure the person that the symptoms are likely to clear up in a few weeks. Remind of the benefits of GLP-1 receptor agonist treatment in terms of glucose control and cardiovascular risk reduction. 
In the meantime, simple things such as having smaller, more frequent meals, eating more slowly, stopping eating when the sensation of fullness starts and avoiding fried and fatty foods can reduce the feelings of postprandial fullness and the worsening of gastroesophageal reflux symptoms and nausea. And it's also very relevant to maintain an adequate fluid intake. For some people, short-term treatment with an antiemetic could prove useful and certainly over-the-counter dyspepsia treatments can also be helpful. Finally, the structural differences between GLP-1 receptor agonists means that their effects can be different uh, between individuals. Um, So if what we've already discussed hasn't been effective, then you might consider switching to a different GLP-1 receptor agonist. Always important to consider hyperglycemia when adding any new therapy if the person is already taking a sulfonylurea and or insulin. So in this case, starting a GLP-1 receptor agonist with insulin or a sulfonylurea it will be vital for that person to have access to blood glucose monitoring and appropriate re- education or regular contact with a healthcare professional around dose titration of the insulin or the sulfonylurea based on the on the blood glucose readings. It'd be very valuable to revisit um, how to reduce the risk of hyperglycemia, the signs and symptoms, and how to manage the person with diabetes should they have a hyperglycemic episode. And don't forget, in this area, it's very important to educate the person's family and friends as well. So finally, for those with side effects, keep reassuring and encouraging them. If they can make it through the first few weeks, long-term treatment with GLP-1 receptor agonists could make a positive difference to their glycemic and cardiovascular outcomes. Thank you.